You know, whenever I post a video about dogwood, I inevitably get the same comment several times over, which is, how do you know a tree's a dogwood? <clears throat> By its bark. And it's like, yeah, of course, dogwood bark. It's really distinctive. It's got these cool little like scaly checkerboard almost like things. It's an easy way to identify a lot of different types of trees. What's in that pile? This has been one neglected pile. 2024 has just been kind of a weird one, you know? I don't know, I, I started the year with a, a, a pretty nasty cold, but then I had a lot of fun with my sawdust bread video. Mm -mm, mm -mm. More on that coming soon, by the way. But then after that, I went out of town for a little while, and then I had hernia surgery that I've been recovering from for a few weeks. Surgery survived. I'm a hydration king. I've been drinking water and apple juice. Here, just having been surgered. Okay. Hmm. Anyway, all this to say, I've really missed you all, first and foremost. And second of all, I feel like I've kind of been in a little bit of a creative rut uh, after so much time off, and I need like a good hard restart and what better than to just go back to the basics dig into the pile and make something out of a gnarly piece of wood this shape right here is so good I, i'm going to do something with this but this is not the vibe today now when the shelf of chaos gets neglected things get really chaotic Oh yeah, a viewer sent me this gorgeous piece of walnut uh, from Oregon. I can tell is gonna be incredible. I just need to figure out what to make out of this piece of wood. I might take this over to some of my friends who are actually good at wood turning and <laughs> see what they recommend. This fella right here has been calling my name for months now. I'm really in the mood for this today. Just throw this crazy root ball on the lathe and see if we can't make something out of it. Even if that something is a disaster. This stump came from a flowering dogwood tree that was actually in my uncle's yard. It got sick and died last year, and after he pulled it out of the ground, he was kind enough to bring it over to me, and I was immediately eager to make something with these roots. First things first, though, fun fact about roots, they grow in the earth. Now, the word earth comes from the Middle English ertho, which comes from the Old English ertho, which comes from the Proto-West Germanic ertho, which comes from the Poro germanic ertho, meaning dirt, ground, or earth. And that's that's why the first thing we got to do here is clean the dirt out from between these roots. Okay, so I've cleared out most of the dirt. We've got some really cool stuff going on here. I, I hope I can keep as much of it as possible. I would like to keep some asymmetricality when it's all said and done, especially because as you can see, it's much wider this way than it is this way. There is definitely like a natural bowl shape to it. Ultimately, what I'm hoping for here is that I can finish with something where we can see all this Cool stuff still once we've, we've cleaned it all out and, and carved it down. I'm gonna cut the top of this off to somewhere like right around here. Shape the bottom first, cut a, a mortise that we can then throw on there, flip it around, and then carve into the, into the top. This may not work at all. Oh well. The first thing I wanna do here is create a flat enough surface on this mess of roots to be able to screw in a face plate, which will let me start shaping the bottom. So after trimming this down so that this piece will actually fit on the lathe, I've tried first to see if I could angle grind a semi-flat surface into the root half, but it didn't take me long to realize that was a terrible idea. Okay, change of plans. What I'm gonna do is start by putting, where did I put that? We are so back, I've already lost one of the things I was just holding on to like two seconds ago. Okay, instead of trying to angle grind that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, this, this is gonna require a lot more steps, but I think in the end, this is the best way to do this. I'm gonna put the face plate on this bottom section. This is essentially waste right here. I'll screw this on and I can then just turn a flat-ish surface in the middle of this that I can then pull this off, unscrew it, screw it in here, which will allow me to turn this around, shape down the bottom, including a mortise to hold on to, flip it back around, and then finish shaping the top. So probably a better way to do it, but I'm not a professional. I just play one on the internet. It smells like up dog wood in here. 
let's see if we can find what feels like center for this. It's kind of doing this. Boop, boop. So it feels like it wants to be on like this half. And hopefully this works out. You know, if it doesn't, please send all complaints to P.O. Box 900762, Sandy, Utah, A4090. That's my P.O. Box. I hope you don't actually send complaints there, but if you do have complaints, by all means, send, send them to my P.O. Box. Okay, dogwood is hard stuff. So, this should be interesting. Here we go. That's uneven. I'm just gonna make sure these all feel, yeah, okay. All right, let's get to it. I can already tell it doesn't feel right. So as it sits on the lid right now, the center is right there. And I would rather it be right around here. So what flattening a bunch of this will do is give me the ability to kind of move it around and be like, this is gonna be the center of the bowl. Good. I'm just gonna carefully cut through enough of the middle of the roots until it starts to feel like I'm cutting into mostly solid wood. I'm not really worried about carving away too much in the middle here since this is where the bowl part is gonna go later on, but still I am trying to only cut until it's just getting to be straight wood and then just a large enough spot to give me some flexibility with where I'm gonna put that faceplate. Okay, I think we've got enough of a platform here to recenter this further down this way and have it be feeling secure enough, then flip around, work on the other end. Sure, okay. Feeling hopeful. I kind of wish there was more stuff spreading out this way as well. Let's see. Yep, you see, now I can place this right where I think the middle of the bowl should be and will be much more properly centered. All right, are you gonna be hitting up against this? No, I think we'll be okay. I'm gonna part this off like right there. Probably would've been easier to do with a chainsaw. Look at how far over we are. Now that I've centered it where I want it to be, crazy. Luckily, once I cut into way up here, we should have more room to play with it. Should be the operative word. This sucks, I'm gonna chainsaw it. All right, that was much easier. I'm glad I did that. Because I could tell that was gonna be just a nightmare to try to turn all the way through that with how scary this half is. I don't like to be around it. Come on, there we go. Still a little nervous about how uncentered this feels. Let's, let's see, where's the center point? No, we're fine. We're fine. Now it's time to shape the outside and also flatten the bottom before carving in a recess or a mortise, which will allow me to flip and secure the wood and then carve freely into the top. 
Right away, I am really loving this dogwood. It's quite hard and cuts well, so I shouldn't have to deal with too much tear out, which a weird, gnarled, rooty piece of wood like this could have a lot of grain tear out if the wood was softer. Now with the mortise cut in, I'm just gonna check to make sure that it's sized right for the chuck and bingo, we're looking good there. Feels nice and secure. Now it's time to shape this upper outer area and I'm pretty much just going by feel and vibes here. I have an idea of how I'd like the general shape of the finished piece to look, but it's gonna be tricky because once I turn this around and start carving into the top half, a lot of those roots might not be very well attached to the trunk of the tree and I could very easily lose a bunch of them. And that could wildly change the final shape and size, so I'm just trying to both be careful and also be prepared to improvise if needed. All right, it's tomorrow now. Uh, one day later, I was not able to get everything finished up yesterday, so I had to leave this hanging out on the lathe. But we made some good progress, and I am loving the color we're finding already in here. A couple things that I'm a little concerned about. This section right here is tucked in pretty deep. You know, ideally, we have a bowl shape on this exterior all the way around, just so that we can ensure that we've got at least some bowl here. You know, this is gonna be a weird piece. This is not meant to be like a perfect bowl. This is just meant to highlight as much of the cool roots going on here as possible. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. Just stumbling about blindly. I'm, I might try to bring, you know, bring this bottom in a little bit tighter just to get up against this piece of root right here. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm also worried when I flip this thing around, we're just gonna have big chunks of these roots flying off because they're not fully connected to anything. I don't know what's happening. Let's jump back on this. We'll be able to finish this today. Some really great color in here though. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Okay, let's get back on it. We are pressing forward because I am done with the bottom part. I, I've reached that point now where I'm a little worried if I keep carving and fine tuning, eventually we're just gonna have nothing left. With this one wanted kind of like a flowering type feel to it. It's springtime, plants are waking back up again after a long hibernation. Kind of wanted the feeling of turning a tree upside down and having those roots kind of whoop, going like that. Not sure if we're gonna get there in the end, but let's find out together. I'm gonna really, really wanna be careful and make very delicate cuts here. Because I've got these roots growing in all sorts of crazy directions, a catch. Be very easy to get a catch on this, which would rip an entire one of these little roots out. It could pull this whole thing off the lathe, it could ruin the whole piece. So here, especially at the beginning, Delicate cuts, stopping relatively frequently to check on where the cuts are happening since it's kind of hard to see when it's moving. You know, kind of looking at where the cut is happening. I find it really helpful to not look at the tool but look like up above where, the, where it's easier to see in the line I'm cutting moving. So kind of looking higher up on the piece. Now I'm just gonna carve bit by bit until I get to the appropriate level of boldness in the bowl area region spot. And while I do that, how about we get into some fun facts about tree roots. I'd imagine a lot of us have probably seen diagrams like this, ones where the root network of a tree is growing deep into the soil as an almost inverse of the above ground half of the tree, but underground. And well, depending on the species of tree and the condition where it's growing, it probably doesn't look anything like that at all. 
a lot of trees grow root networks that look something more like this, spreading upwards of five times the diameter of the canopy itself, growing a thick network of mostly pretty thin roots, all within just the top handful of inches of soil. Some other types of trees, meanwhile, grow a deep taproot. And again, depending on the species and conditions, it can reach up to a couple hundred feet deep into the earth. Some types of trees send up multiple clones of themselves from a shared root network, much like our dear, dear friend, Pando. Pando! All this to say, roots are fascinating, and I wish I had more time to dive deeper into them in this video, because it's really just wild to think about how these trees that we know and love are something where we're really only seeing half of their story when we're walking through a forest. But, well, I feel like I've carved about as much of the middle of this bowl out as I'm comfortable doing, so it's on to sanding, which I've got to be a bit careful with since there are so many wild root parts flying about when this thing's spinning on the lathe. One wrong move and my hand could be in for a real bad time. So it was a lot of hand sanding, but honestly, not too bad. Well, I think this is about as good as we're gonna get it. So I'm like mixed on how this turned out. The wood is very cool, undeniably, but you know, it's time for the best part. So let's hold our judgment until we get to see what this wood looks like. A bit of oil on it. All right, going with walrus oils, cutting board oil finish on this one. Keep it nice and simple. Let the color speak for itself. So here we go. Okay, this is actually pretty promising. The oil is really making the pink in that dogwood pop. It's beautiful. Some really weird and interesting grain pattern in the root bits going on. In the bottom half, which is of course the base of the trunk and the top of the root ball, there are these really great cream colored stripey streaks. And those along with the dark bits of inner bark are really contrasting nicely with that pink color. After a quick buff and a day's rest, let's take one final look at our root ball bowl platter display stand thing, whatever you want to call it. And you know what? This has grown on me quite a bit. I think I'd hoped for a lot more splaying out of roots when I was looking at the original stump before I cut into it at all. And, and I was initially a little disappointed that it didn't match what I had in mind. But after a couple days later, I, I actually really liked the shape that we got, the colors we got, especially the grain, all those natural cracks and grooves, even a couple little hints here and there of rootin' tootin' chatoyancy. All in all, I'm gonna say that this time the pile provided. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry again, by the way, for the long break between episodes. Uh, we're gonna be back on a better track here, I promise. But also a huge thanks to my patrons and members here who helped support me through this long break. Especially those of you that were hanging out and keeping me company in the Discord server while I spent a week in bed after my surgery. As a thank you to those patrons and members for these past couple of months, I'm letting them choose what I do for my next video. So if you're interested in that, you know where to go. Otherwise, stay tuned. I got some fun stuff in store a map update. Maybe I'll take a stab at perfecting the sawdust bread recipe. And of course, hopefully I'll see you back here again real soon when we find out what's in that pile.